Brent, welcome to my brew day. I'm going to show you what I got for brewing, show you how to brew, and then show you how to enjoy some brew. So stick with me. So, we've got a burner. This is a counterflow work chiller. It's just some copper tubing that's been run inside some plastic tubing using these simple a quick rundown of the equipment. Of course we've got our burner and our fermentor which doesn't have anything in it right now. Various hoses, thermometers, hot pad gloves, some tubing, etc. This is my stick for measuring the amount of work I have. It's marked kind of hard to see in the light but it's marked off in gallons got my propane burner my March food grade pump my kegel get down in here you can see how that copper runs off to the side like that that's kind of important got my mash tun with just a uh, stainless steel braid off of a water supply feed going to the ball valve right here. Got my hot liquor tank, which right now has uh, a bunch of reverse osmosis water in it that I fixed up last night. Same thing, a ball valve. I've got this little jammer here that uh, produces reverse osmosis and then filtered water for me. And brew dog. And then here is the mash paddle, which is really good for stirring the mash. That's it. You don't need a whole lot of stuff. Got my secondary fermenters there. And then a uh, kegerator project going on over here. That's another that's another video though. So let's get brewing. Okay, so here we are. Here's the setup. Our propane tank, our kettle, our hot liquor tank, which gravity feeds into our mash tun. And that's all fueled with the pump. I've got nine gallons of water in my kettle. I'm going to heat that up to about 170 degrees. I'm going to pour that into my hot into my excuse me my mash tun where I'm going to have my grains here in just a little bit, and then that will begin the mash. Right now, I'm going to adjust the pH of this water to 5.4, 5.2, using phosphoric acid, and then this good stuff right here, which is for locking your mash in. It's a buffer, and then these are my little uh, test strips right here. Okay, so here are, here's our grain bill. It's uh, 29 and a half pounds. It's a pretty big beer. I'm going to make a 10 gallon batch. This is for IPA. There are all the hops for it. This particular beer has 8 ounces of hops in it by the end. And then I like to use dry yeast. And this is the yeast for this beer today. I have my pH adjusted. I'm going to fire up the burner, heat this water up. Okay, so now I've got my grains in my mash tun. And I'm going to measure the temperature of the grains because I want to heat that water right there hot enough that when I pour it into these grains and our temperature settles down, I'm going to rest at about 154 degrees for 90 minutes. This igloo cooler will hold that temperature extremely steady for that amount of time. So when we get ready to do that, I'll uh, turn the camera back on and we'll see how the mash in goes. Okay, so I've got my grains and my water all mixed together. I stirred it up really, really well. And now I'm just taking a temperature reading here. See what it's setting at right now. I'll let the thermometer sit there for a couple of minutes. 
This is a very big beer. There's hardly any room in my mash tun for for all of it. So far, I'm sitting at about 150. It's only been in there for a couple of minutes. It's still rising. Might have to add a little hot water to it if we if we need to. Okay, so things are sitting at about 152, 153. A little blurry. 152, 153 degrees there. Everything else is just going to rest for about 90 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to put some more water in here, about 10 gallons. Heat that up to 175 degrees and put it here in my hot liquor tank in order to use to rinse these grains out. That's called a sparge. I got a little time to do that, so I'm going to work on the kegerator project for a while. Okay, got the burner going again, and I'm heating my sparge water up. Remember, that's going to go from here to there. I've been working on my mash temperature. It's a little low right now, 150 degrees. I'm trying to adjust it by adding boiling water. I've already added about a half a gallon. I'm going to add another half a gallon more. It's sitting at about 150 to 152 which is okay, but I like a little higher than that, maybe 154. Okay, so uh, 90 minutes later, here's my mash. And uh, here I am recirculating the beer. I've been doing that through the pump here. Right into there, it's pretty clear. See that? And now I'm going to put it up here into my kettle and I'm going to take water out of this and I've made this little deal, it's got holes all in the bottom of it here. And I'm just going to trickle that over the top of this grain and I'm actually going to put that piece of plastic with holes in it on top here. That way it'll just barely push the water down through it and it won't, it won't uh, drill a little holes in the grain bed. The whole point is to make it filter all the other stuff out and just leave you this nice clear stuff. It's going to take me 90 minutes to put about 12 gallons in that. So the 9 gallons I put in here, minus what the grain has soaked up, that's probably soaked up probably 2 or 3 gallons. And uh, I won't get that water back out of it. So there's about six gallons there, maybe about five or six gallons out of here that's going to rinse through there and combine to make 12 gallons there. So I'll get the sparge going. Okay, here we are. I've got the uh, piece of plastic with the holes in it on top of the grain bed. I'm just barely dripping out with my little device here. Here's my wort running, still nice and clear. And the, I want to demonstrate that I won't, I will never overflow this if I have this in the keg because the flow from here is matched by the flow from there. Hopefully, I want to take 90 minutes to get 12 gallons. So here we go. There it is. And that's actually a little fast. I'm going to have to slow everything down just a little bit. It's just a trickle. All right, we've been sparging for about 10 minutes. You see the water there is really clear. It's not overflowing. It's just trickling and then it's going all the way in here. Just, just kind of trickling a little bit. Don't want to rush it. Got my stick in here to measure. I want to get it to about, I'm going to have a tie wrap on here, I move up and down so I can see it, it's, uh, it's about 11 and 3 quarter gallon. Okay, it's about uh, 15 minutes into the sparge and I wanted to make sure that you saw everything still going just like it was. If I was running out of water here on the top, well then that would mean I was running it out too fast from here. If I was overflowing, that means I would be running it out too fast from here. So it's a balancing game, but it's real easy to figure out. Now, the reason I wanted to get in here now is because I'm at two gallons at 15 minutes into the sparge. That's 
one gallon every seven and a half minutes. That is the perfect rate to draw off this water in this amount of time, so, or this wort in this amount of time. So slow and seven and a half gallons a minute. I mean, one gallon every seven and a half minutes. I'm also going to strike up my burner and start heating this up. Don't want to quite bring it to a boil, but I can sure get it close and it makes it go a little quicker. Here we are back with you. We're still in the sparge. We're about an hour and I'm thinking maybe an hour into it out of 90 minutes. Okay, welcome to the boil. Here we are. There is uh, nothing else going here with the sparge. We are done with that. And actually, I will take these grains and I'll put them in the compost. Pretty good place for them actually they're really good in there anyway here's the boil going on i've already added my first hops as soon as it started boiling i put in one ounce of hops according to my recipe it could be more could be less and started my timer for one hour i want to boil this for one hour i will add hops to it at certain scheduled times according to the recipe so i'll show you how to add hops at, a, at the next edition which will be in about Oh, 45 minutes or so. It's taken me a while to get it just like this. You definitely have to adjust the temperature and wait and look at it and stir it because it will boil over. And you have got to make sure it does not boil over because it is a big sticky mess and you're wasting beer and we don't want to do that. Anyway, so watch it, adjust the temperature, get it to where it's rolling but not foaming up and foaming over. And uh, you can kind of see how that goes. The main thing is do not leave it unattended until you are positive it's not going to start boiling over. That's usually about five minutes into the boil. Anyway, while that's doing that, I'm going to clean this stuff up. Okay, so we're back, and this is for my buddy Kurt. Here's the deal. You got to stay ahead of the game. I got 27 minutes left to go in the boil. Okay. I've still got to get my fermenter ready because that's got to be ready to go at the very last minute. I got to have my pump sterilized and I have to have my counter flow wort chiller sterilized and ready to go. Or sanitized, I should say. Anyway, I've mixed up some sanitation solution in my fermenter and uh, I'm going to get that thing all sloshed around for a little while. And then we're going to move on to uh, getting everything else done. And I'll show you how that's going in a minute. Okay, so I have sanitizing solution in my fermenter here. I'm using the brew cube. It does nicely for a 10-gallon batch. Anyway, I have enough water in there to kind of cover it up to here. And so I just kind of rock it back and forth and leave it sitting on one side for a little while. And... Uh, and I'll eventually end up turning it upside down so I can get this portion of it um, sanitized as well. So the whole thing gets sanitized. And uh, I'll show you how that works. Also got my pump over here to sanitize and the tubing for that. And then a counter flow work chiller. So we're going to put it all together. Uh, things move fast, so you have to be on top of them. Okay, so I've turned the fermenter upside down now over this uh, pail. And you can hear the water kind of gurgling out now. It's, uh, so that's, that's sanitizing this bottom half. So it's like a cube. I'm just getting one side at a time. So at minimum, at 30 seconds a side, it's going to be, you know, three minutes, two and a half minutes. So anyway, there we go. And uh, then I'm going to use this right here. It's collecting here, a sanitizer solution. For the next step. Okay, we're back. So, I've got about 20 minutes left to go in the boil. I've gone top of things. I've gotten the fermenter sanitized now, okay? And the next thing I've got to do is get the pump sanitized. So, I'm going to take you over here and I'm going to show you the pump. And there it is. 
Hello, I'm back. Okay, that's that. Now here's the pump. Got the tubing on it. There's my counterflow work chiller. So I'm going to set this thing up here. And I'll show you exactly what I got going on. Okay, so now I've just got this pail here siphoning down to the input of my pump, coming out of the pump, going into the counterflow work chiller, coming out of the counterflow work chiller, all the way up to here. I'm just going to let that run for a while. That will make sure everything's nice and sanitized and I don't have to worry about it because I time to add the second hops. Okay, I've got my second edition of hops, in this case two ounces. I've also got some Irish moss. I'm going to dump that in here. It's 15 minutes left in my boil. Okay, here go my tablets. They're just Irish moss. It's pressed into a tablet form. And here are my hops. I'm dumping them in there. Woohoo! Woohoo! There you go. Alright, that's good. Such an ins insignificant event. Yet the timing is everything there. I'm going to stir them in real good. The boil's going really nicely. It smells. If I could put that on video. I don't know. That's good stuff. Alright, and my lid's going to go back on. And we're going to let it boil for another 13 minutes until we come back to it. But we need to make sure we're on top of things. Back to sanitizing and getting my setup for the fermenter. Okay, we're getting ready to add our last bit of hops here. We're coming up on about uh, maybe seven minutes to go on our boil. I have the output of the keg or the um, kettle. It's going into the input of the pump. That's going to the output, which is coming right over here and going into the counter flow work chiller. And then the output of that, which is this clear vinyl tube, sticking in the airlock hole of my fermenter, which has been all closed up, sanitized. It's all good. I've got my garden hose on the input here. It's going to be flowing in the direction opposite the beer flow around this tube on the outside of this copper. And there's the output hose, and I've got it going over to water some trees. They I can use a drink during this drought, and there's no rule against uh, cooling beer, just irrigating. A minute 20 to go. I've given it a good swirl. I want it that way. I'm going to get everything ready to go. With a minute left, I almost want to turn on my water. That's how ready I am. Okay, I've got this open. I've got to go into the pump. I've got my water running. And here comes my beer. I'm running the clear stuff out of the chiller now. But I see the beer coming. Here's the beer. There it is. It's going in. We've got beer going in there. I'm going to let that go for a few minutes. And then I'm going to make you very happy. I'm going to give you what you've been waiting all day for. A sample of this wonderful Wurt. I think I'll do it right now. It's very simple. I pinch off the tube. I bring it over. I fill the jar up. I pinch off the tube. I put it back in. And that's it. Simple. It's chunky. But it's a simple. Okay, so I'm almost out of battery, but here it is. It's going into the fermenter. I can already feel it's cool to the touch. I haven't taken a temperature. And it's really foamy. That's good. We want some oxygen in there. We want it foamy. We're going to pitch our yeast in there in a minute. We'll just simply open this back up, sprinkle our yeast over the top of it, close it back up, stick our airlock in there, and uh, we'll be good to go. About a week later, it'll be ready to rack over into the secondary fermenter. Okay, here we are, and we got our fermenter. We're going to open it up, just kind of set the lid off. It's very foamy in there. And I'm just going to sprinkle my yeast in. 
it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to spread it out. I like to get it all around. I'm holding the camera, otherwise I would do it over the whole top. There we go, sorry. Two packages for this 10 gallon batch, and it's pretty big beer. My sample said 1.075 on my specific gravity. That's pretty high. It's going to finish out at about maybe 8% alcohol. So, it's a very strong and dangerous beer. That's why I call it Danger IPA. There we go. Brew day complete. A little mess to clean up, but not too bad.